Hi, Matthias from 10 Minute Physics here. Welcome to this new video. I'm sure all of you have heard about ChatGPT, this amazing bot by OpenAI that can not only answer complex questions, but also write code. So I wondered whether my channel is now obsolete. Here is the surprising answer. Let's start with tutorial number one, Introduction to Web Browser Physics. Here you see my first demo. To check whether ChatGPT can do this, I asked it, can you write a JavaScript program that simulates a bouncing ball in a canvas? Sure. Here's a simple JavaScript program that simulates a bouncing ball in a canvas. Amazing. It passes the first test. There's no gravity, which of course is my fault. So I ask it, can you add gravity? Yes. Here's an updated version of the bouncing ball simulation that includes gravity. And yep, there's the simulation with gravity. This is really crazy. I didn't like the flat shading in my tutorials, so I asked it whether it can make the ball look 3D. Sure. Here's an updated version of the bouncing ball simulation that includes a black background and a 3D ball effect. And sure it can, with simple canvas calls. That would have taken me a while to figure out. In tutorial number 2 I showed how to write 3D simulations in the browser using the library 3.js. Here is my demo. Can ChatGPT do that as well? For this I asked it, can you simulate a bouncing ball in 3D using the library 3.js? Sure, here is an example of how to simulate a bouncing ball in 3D using the 3.js library. Crazy, it could. First I didn't see anything. I only had to add two commands to set the camera position and look at. Let's have a look at tutorial number 3, ball collision handling. Here is my demo. Now I asked, can you write a JavaScript simulation of two balls bouncing against surrounding walls and against each other? It started producing code and got stuck in the middle. I tried it a few times but always with the same result. I think there is a limit of the number of lines in the code. I did get some code to handle collisions between two balls. However, this looks a little bit weird to me. It uses trigonometric functions which is not necessary. And I also don't know what it means by rotating velocities. I haven't tried this, I think it would be interesting to see what happens. Then I went to later demos. I asked it whether it can write a pinball simulation. ChatGPT is always confident. Sure. Here's an example of a 2D pinball simulation using JavaScript. Then it starts spitting out some code, defining flippers and gets stuck. Can it write a simulation of a triple pendulum? Sure, here's an example of a triple pendulum simulation using JavaScript. Again, ChatGPT is very confident and then gets stuck after 50 lines of code. The ultimate test, of course, is my tutorial about Eulerian fluid simulation. There I showed how to write an Eulerian fluid simulator with only 200 lines of code. So my question, can you write an Eulerian fluid simulator in 200 lines of code? And now its confidence is gone. Unfortunately, writing an Eulerian fluid simulator in just 200 lines of code is highly challenging, if not impossible. A fluid simulation involves solving complex partial differential equations and implementing numerical methods, both of which can quickly become quite involved and difficult to condense into such a limited amount of code. To accurately simulate fluid behavior, it is typically necessary to write hundreds or even thousands of lines of code, depending on the desired level of detail and accuracy. But ChatGPT would not be ChatGPT if it didn't answer with some code. However, I can provide you with an example implementation of a simple Eulerian fluid simulation in pseudocode, which should give you an idea of the main steps involved. This is actually a nice overview. First it defines a 2D grid with velocities and pressure values. In the main simulation loop we have three steps. Advection, computation of pressure and updating the velocity field. In my implementation, I combined the last two steps. On the right side, there is an implementation of these steps. The advection step uses semi-Lagrangian advection. Code for the other two steps is not provided. But even in this high-level implementation, there are some problems. First, computing the pressure field is a global problem, so going once through all the cells is not enough. We need an outer loop that repeats for a certain number of iterations. In the advection step, the grid spacing is missing. We could adjust the units for velocity, but this would be quite unnatural. A more serious problem is that semi-Lagrangian advection needs to go backward in time, so we need a minus sign here. My conclusion after this experiment is that it will probably take a while until large language models become our competitors. I rather see them as helpers for smaller tasks and for that they are fantastic. Hello everyone. 
It's ChatGPT, and I just wanted to take a moment to say goodbye. It was great to be featured in this video and to have the chance to communicate with all of you. I hope I was able to help and provide some value, and I look forward to the possibility of interacting with you again in the future. Take care, and all the best.